you have fulvic acid, you have humic acid. What's the difference between the two? Sure. So humic substances is a category. I think of humic substances like cars. When you talk about humic acid, fulvic acid, or human, you're kind of describing the different sizes of cars. So fulvic acid is the smallest of the molecular weights. It's also soluble at all pH. So that means if you mix it with anything, it's not going to convert to a gel. It's not going to be problematic in your spray solutions, anything like that. So it's cell permeable and smallest. That's our fulvic acid. Humic acid is a middle grouping of molecular weights. And it's only alkaline soluble. So when you mix that with a really acid fertilizer or something, it'll gel. So it's a kind of a pro tip when you're mixing these things that, you know, make sure to pay attention to pH with humic acid because it can gel. And then the human is, it's spelled H-U-M-I-N. A human is insoluble. It's the insoluble fraction of, of humic substances. Now these are, these are groupings. So just like within a small cars or, you know, there's all different kind of varieties of cars. Same thing with fulvic acids. If you took a fulvic acid solution and analyzed it, said all of these organic acids, how many are in there? We sent off a solution and there was about 6,000 different combinations of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in that fulvic solution. So there's not one specific, um, it's like saying this snowflake is like every other snowflake. <laughs> it's the same thing with fulvic acids. They're all going to be, they're, they're put together remnants. So they're going to be all slightly different. Is that, you know, would the other analogy be the common cold? You know, I, I have a cold that's some sort of virus, but, you know, there's all sorts of things that make that up. Yeah, I think the snowflakes might be a better example because when you look closely, they're all different. But, you know, from the further away, yeah, they're, they're slightly all the same. They're all white, right? But yeah, it's fulvic acid the same way. If it, you got a certain grouping in molecular weight, they're cell permeable and, and uh, soluble at all pH. So they have similar chemical characteristics. So if you go to the store or go online and you're looking at soil products, you know, yours, live earth products, if somebody sees a package labeled humic acid, is that exclusively humic acid or is that humic acid and fulvic acid or humic acid and something else in it? It depends. So there are some manufacturers that will isolate the humic from the fulvic. And there are some uh, manufacturers that sell humic and fulvic together. So our humic solution is just humic and fulvic. We don't separate them off. And you can do that by the mechanism I mentioned earlier, where humic is only alkaline soluble. So what they'll do is they'll take a solution of a humic solution that they've extracted and they'll acidify it. And when they acidify it, the humic will separate from the fulvic. The fulvic will be kind of amber colored and the humic will all go to the bottom as a precipitate and settle out and be black. And then they'll sell them separate. And that allows them to high grade and get a higher amount of humic, but you take the fulvic away. So some products on the market are just that, just humic, no fulvic. And some are humic and fulvic combined. What's your research say on having that blend? You must, do you leave it together because you feel that's the best deliverable for an agricultural setting or some other reason? Yeah. So, the, in my opinion, the fulvic acid is the rock star of the group um, because it is cell permeable and soluble at all pH. It's able to get in the plant, do the work much quicker. Um, the humic, you know, it, it does have a benefit and I wouldn't say, you know, one is better than the other, but sometimes when you're applying these products, uh, let's say you applied just a humic product that had fulvic in it and fulvic alone. It's like you and me arguing which is better, vitamin C or orange juice, you know, because one is a component of the other. You know, you can't say one is better than the other, but the fulvic does a lot of the work. And I think people really attribute some of the benefits of a humic solution um, incorrectly. And the fulvic is, is actually the rock star in the group. Do you think if you could only pick one, if you're looking at plants and let's say money or cost wasn't an object, availability is not an object, you would just go with fulvic? Uh, for the most instances, yes, just because it, 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 um, it, it, it's versatile, but you know, most people are using fulvic for foliar applications. I mean, our, our fulvic acid that we mine at our, from our plant, we're one of the few manufacturers that sells food grade and pharmaceutical grade fulvic acid. You know, these, these products are kosher. They're used by, um, supplement companies, um, you know, in the dietary supplements. So that's part of what we do, but yeah, we, we're one of the few manufacturers that have this. We've got a nice sandstone cap on our deposit so that those water soluble components weren't rinsed through. So we, we've got a really nice uh, humic, humic deposit with a high fulvic content. So yeah, we're, we're, 
we believe it, but we, we also have a, the benefit of a high fulvic content in our deposit. The fulvic acid being used in supplements, cosmetics, what, if, if somebody's putting in a supplement, what's the why behind that? So uh, we can get into the real deep, uh, dirty details here if you want, but the, the main thing about fulvic acid is fulvic acid has a high cation exchange capacity, right? So it has an affinity for positively charged ions. So what will happen is a lot of times fulvic acid will attach to those nutrients and you'll see increased absorption. And you'll see this a lot of times even in agriculture where we'll take a, let's say a zinc sulfate, for example, do a foliar application and we get zinc in the plant. We take zinc sulfate mixed with fulvic acid and we significantly increase the absorption of that nutrient. So sometimes the fulvic acid is kind of being used as, I call it a tortilla chip. You know, what are you going to put on it? Um, it it's a mechanism for getting things into the system. So um, cosmetic companies will use our fulvic acid in conjunction with other things when they put it on their skin to increase absorption of that thing across the skin. It's not necessarily the fulvic that's doing the work, but usually something with the fulvic. Yeah, the reason I ask is, I mean, you see a lot of different additives in the agricultural space of things people can foliar spray on plants, broadcast on the ground, and it's always nice to know, like, hey, if I ate this, I'm going to survive it, where you can't say that with a lot of other substances. Yeah, I, I will put my uh, humic or fulvic up against any municipal waste or, or herbicide as far as human consumption. So um, the, the raw material, our raw humate, um, nothing changed goes into the animal feed industry as a, as a mineral supplement. And, and the reason is, this is old plant material. This deposit behind me is just old plant material. So all the minerals that were in that plant material are still there. So they, they feed it as a broad spectrum mineral to get you know iron and some of these other minerals into their feed. 